Good morning, sir. Are you Brody Jack Johnson? Yes, I am. Uh, this is Judge Middleton. I'm here at the courthouse. I don't know if you can yeah. see her, but your lawyer, Rhonda Ives, is here with me. Also present okay. is Chief Assistant Prosecuting Attorney Joshua Robert, and the complaining witness, Ms. Schweitzer, is also here. Mr. Johnson, uh, it's alleged that on or about... Um, no one ever says on or about except people like me. Uh, November 7th in the city of Trier, you assaulted Shauna Schweitzer, someone that you had a dating relationship with and lived in the same house. Charged as a third offense, as a fourth habitual offender, making that punishable by the leave up to 20 years imprisonment. Uh, this is the time and date set for a preliminary exam conference regarding your preliminary examination next Tuesday. Mr. O'Bear, the chief assistant, was about to tell me what the plea offer is here. The offer in this case is DV third as a second habitual. If there is a preliminary exam, I mean, he's requesting a preliminary exam according to his attorney. So at this time, the offer would be revoked and there'd be no, there, no further negotiations on the case. All right. That would leave the matter as a felony where it would have to get bound over to the circuit court. Um, they would make the maximum sentence seven and a half years. Um, and your lawyer advises that you don't wish to accept that and you wish to have a preliminary examination. Is that true? Yes. All right. Your lawyer indicates she also wishes to have me address the bond. Yes. The bond is presently set in the amount of $10,000 cash or surety. You also have a larceny charge pending a pretrial coming up. This is about your fifth or sixth domestic violence charge. You were charged with domestic violence, third offense. Well, you had some R and O, but I think in 2011, you were already charged with the DV third offense. So as of 2011, you already had several domestic violence convictions and it didn't get better after that. You had a oh, meth yeah. lab charge in 2012. You had another domestic violence, third offense in 21, uh, August of 21. You also have several resisting and obstructing charges. You have unpaid fines and costs in Oops. Uh, eight in a meth charge that was reduced to a misdemeanor and you were supposed to pay that's not much $125 you didn't pay that um, so I'm not going to address the bond until we have the preliminary examination. You've got a lot of assaultive history in your background. You got methamphetamine history in your background. You have a pending theft charge, and the prosecutor is holding the line on a seven and a half year felony charge, which could send you to the Michigan Department of Corrections. Don't know any of the facts other than it says you were throwing her out of your house and locked her out. Uh, that's not how it works. So I'll note the defendant raises the bond issue. Continued until time of the prelim. Next week, the prelim will be A1128. 
23 at one o'clock. We'll deal with the bond issue at that time. So unless you post $10,000, you're gonna sit till we hear where this case goes next week. Ms. Schweitzer is here. She's available to consult with the prosecutor victim unit. And uh, we'll address this next Tuesday at one o'clock. So you're good to go. Also, you've got a pretrial on that larceny charge on the 22nd. So I'll be seeing you on that, I think, tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure what that one's about, but you're good to go. All right, I'll see you next Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. We're done here. Uh, I'm not granting your bond motion. I've continued it till next week. You have a right to have a prelim where they're going to take testimony to try to establish probable cause that a crime was committed and probable cause that you did it. That will be next Tuesday at one o'clock. All right. I'll see you then. All right. All right, you need to go because we got to get the next guy in there. All right, tell us what's next and give me bond. I don't want any more contact with dumb bitches. Yeah, I get that a lot. Maybe we'll add a couple zeros to his bond. The problem is when I mute that, then I can't unmute it. Was he calling you that or was he calling I think it was directed generally at me, maybe Josh. Ms. Schweitzer, uh, you can stay. And I would also suggest you stop down and see Marissa at the prosecutor's office. Have you spoken? Stopped, Marissa stopped by and gave her a subpoena for next week. She's been in contact with our office. All right, very good. Very good. You would not unmute people from my end. Now I can mute them, but I can no longer unmute them. I don't know why they took that out. Thank you, Brandy, and your cameo appearance. It's still on mute. <clears throat> it's always something. I didn't mean to make it so hard. There should be a little microphone icon with a red slash through it in the bottom corner. I guess I won't do that again, at least not in this room. Thirty seconds. There you go. Thanks. You hit the right button. Good morning, sir. Are you Dwight Allen Summy? 
Yes, sir. Mr. Summey, this is Judge Middleton. I'm here at the courthouse with your lawyer, Rhonda Ives. Um, also present is Prosecuting Attorney Joshua Robert. He's the chief assistant. You're here today for what's called a pre-exam conference. Judge, the jail just called. They're trying to unmute it, but it's not working for them. They got it unmuted. Oh, she just called. She got some help from Sergeant Hasbrook. Uh, Mr. Summy, the allegation is that earlier this month, November 6th, that you did possess firearm as a felon ammunition by a felon and a felony firearm as a fourth habitual offender. Uh, those two first offenses are five-year offenses. A fourth habitual, I believe, would make it a life offense. And the felony firearm is a mandatory two-year prison sentence. I believe, are you on probation or parole to the circuit court? Probation. Bobby Joe Newland is your PO. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, the plea offer is not, it's still compelling. It's possession of a firearm by a felon as a third habitual, which makes it a 10-year maximum, but it takes out the felony firearm charge, um, just the plea for the gun and the ammo as a third offender. Um, Ms. Ives indicated you don't wish to accept that plea offer. If you don't accept it, the plea offer is going to be revoked. Is that correct, Mr. O'Bear? Yeah, Ms. Ives indicated she is going to talk to him again today, so that offer would be open until the end of the day. All right. Uh, Rhonda, would you like to talk to him in a breakout room? Um, or go out to the jail and I see him? I probably will go out to the jail and talk to him again. All right. Your lawyer is going to come out to the jail and see you. You've got a probation violation hold anyway, so you can't bond out. But unless I hear otherwise, this matter is set for prelim for November 28th. At one o'clock. Um, all right. Um, your lawyer will be coming out to the jail to see you. Uh, and otherwise, I'll see you next Wednesday at one o'clock. Next Tuesday. Tuesday. Next Tuesday, the 28th. All right. Good luck, sir. All right. I think that finishes everything we had. Uh, Rhonda, let Josh know if there's any change in the circumstance. If there is, I'll get a waiver on that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, somebody's making toast or something, and it makes me hungry. You can smell it. I think that's just a sign of a stroke. <laughs> Smelling what? toast. I, I smell toast I too. Hope so I... I hope not. All right. Uh, we didn't do too bad today. Rhonda, you got a light week. I know. it's, But you know what? Usually it's like I have 24 cases and they all wave. I get four and three of them want an exam. <laughs> Yes, that's seventy five percent of them on an exam, and then I uh, have twenty four and, and zero, and we resolve all twenty four. So twenty five <laughs> or six to four prelims next week. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.